Hi all and happy Sunday. Today is October 10th and I want to show you what my latest project is. When it gets to be Halloween I always think of like tea lights and candles and lanterns. So I made this lantern. So it's using our cardstock, our vellum cardstock, and some die cuts. And then you put a tea light underneath there or one of those flickerless non-lighting and it lights up. I'm going to put a picture of that on this uh, post when I get done. And I did a lot of cutting ahead of time just because it to cut stuff out it gets very long and tedious. But I am using the intricate leaves die. They are part of the bundle along with the gorgeous leaves from the July to December mini catalog. One of my favorite sets. Great stamps. Great dies. I mean, who can go wrong with leaves, right? Okay, so I am going to put it together using this, but I'm going to show you how you create this with a different sheet of paper. And you can use, I'm going to show you using a punch, but you can use it with dies too. You just want to make sure that whatever your vellum is, that it's bigger than your whole cover. Okay, so I'm going to try it this time with some of this vellum that I colored with um, our Stampin' Blends and alcohol, that technique. Um, I did a video on it a couple, maybe a month and a half back. I don't know. You can look for it. So anyway, let me go ahead and get out the cutter here. This is a 4x12. You guys know that when I buy my 12x12s, I automatically cut them into a 4x12. I can do it really quickly with my Zutter cutter, um, which is something I purchased a long time ago. And it's a tool, we don't have it with Stampin' Up, but it's a fabulous tool that does um, centering and cuts 12 by 12s into strips, four inch strips. Okay, so we're gonna be using our, our scoring tool on this. And since this is 12 and I want four panels, but I need a little lip left to, t um, to you know, attach it, we're gonna go a little shorter than three. So I'm gonna go two and seven eighths and score and then I just take it and put that score line at the two and seven eighths and go again I don't I mean I'm not gonna sit here and add up what it is and carry fractions and all that I love math but not that much so I just make sure that last score line goes right about at that two and seven eighths and then that leaves a little flap there okay and if you're using a die for this, you need to cut this down just a little bit if you're using the baby Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. Um, just because remember, you can't get a four inch piece of paper into it. Um, I'm gonna use a punch though. I have the rectangle punch, which I love. So what I am gonna do is I push it up all the way and I look where that score mark is. Now this punch is about that wide. So I'm going to go right where the score line and the edge meet, and then I'm going to do that. Now I want it to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go a little bit, and I have it pushed all the way in, so it's going to line up. Then I'm just going to go on either side to make that square. Again, that punch between the score lines. Yes, I know I could offset it to begin with, but it's just easier for me to do it this way. In between those score lines. And then a little bit on each side. Oh, my dog's in here with me now. I hope he doesn't start barking. My husband's out on our deck with my mother-in-law and her two Pomeranians. He's getting ready to take her back to uh, the assisted living memory care uh, place. So I'm hoping the dog, I'm hoping Finn won't bark at the two Pomeranians out there. Anyway, so there you have that. And then you just have to decide, do I want it to be higher up or lower? And I'm going to do it higher up. What I also do is fold this over because this is where we're going to put our adhesive after we get everything added on. Oh, and I probably should score so that bends. And our punches, you can go through two layers of cardstock with it. So if, you, if you're kind of OCD like I am on some things, but not on other things. You should see the way my house looks. Um, 
I don't like dusting. Anyway, um, you could, you know, punch it through so that they completely match up. I did a pretty good job, as you can see there. So then I'm going to take, oh, I do need my cutter for one more thing. So then I know that this, so two inches is eight squares. So it looks like this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight. So a two by two would work good in this. I'm going to go two and a fourth by two and a fourth. I'm hoping I have enough to go two and a fourth. No, I'm going to go two and an eighth then. That way I have enough. And I'll have to search for another piece of, um, of vellum, even though I have uh, literally hundreds of these. When I do them, I do a bunch at a time. So, so I know I have, I'm going to go a little bit longer than this. And there you go. So you go two and an eighth. You just have to measure your opening and make sure that you have a little bit of extra so that it'll cover the hole, the opening, the panel, whatever you want to call it. So see how this covers? perfectly. All right. So now I am going to, and you want to make sure, you know, when you do this, there's a side that looks wet still, even though it's dry. You want to make sure that that is on the inside. So I'm going to make sure those are all there and I'm going to use liquid glue. Now the trick with the liquid glue and the vellum, you don't want it to actually look like it's there. You want it to be a very light barely any on there because it's going to smush. That's a technical term. It's going to smush, but you just want to hold on long enough that it adheres. Like I said, since it's vellum and it's very lightweight, even though it's cardstock weight vellum, it's very light. So it'll hold okay. And you might get a little bit, depending on how long your vellum has dried, you might get a little bit of residual ink from the glue if you get glue on your fingers. So see, I'm barely putting any on there. I'm going over that opening and just holding it down for a sec. So I'm really not even squeezing. And of course, it dries very quickly. This is why I did all the die cuts before we did this. Ooh, that is a little bit almost too much there. Let me see if I can get some on the tip. All right. There you go. Doesn't take long to dry. Oh, I kind of moved that a little, didn't I? All right. So then now you're ready to put on your leaves. Now, at some point on this one, I actually put the vellum on last. I tucked those in there. But with these leaves, I kind of want them to be a little bit of the focal point. So I'm going to put them right on top of that. So if you want it like this, where it looks like they're peering out, don't put on your vellum until after you actually put that down. And if you do that, and I can show you, well, you probably can't see it. I have, I used scotch tape. Can you see that? Let me see. Scotch tape to hold it in place. But with the leaves, since there's enough area that we can put some glue down. And again, I'm going very light. I don't know if you can see that. Going very light. I haven't really squeezed. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. I hope I wasn't too loud. Sinus attack happens to the best of us where the sinuses just start draining all at once. <coughs> Sorry. All right. And then I'm just going to touch it with that tip because there will be a little glue still left on there. Um, let me go ahead and put... As you can see, I'm barely putting any dots down. 
Just very little, not even really pushing. It's just coming off the tip. And I'm gonna bring this over here like that. Oh, I left a little shoot, I left a little scritchy in there. Alright. Might have to add some more glue. Oh, it's still on there. Alright, make all your make sure all your scritchies are off before you glue it down. See now it's not gonna stick down. So again, I'm not squeezing, I'm just touching the tip to it. And then where's my snips? Oh no, all right. Uh, we don't carry these anymore, but these are what I used to cut our, we used to carry them back in the day. What well, we used to cut our red rubber when it was actually red rubber and not clear mount. Okay, so let's go ahead, add a few more. And if you want to, you could have your leaves run through the adhesive sheets before you cut them. I usually don't think about using the adhesive sheets until it's too late. All right. Again, not squeezing, just using the tip. Barely squeezing on the heavy parts and then just running the tip through because you have the little residual left on there. And yes, some people put a bottom on their tea light, um, their votive holder, tea light holder, whatever you want to call this. I personally don't. Only because I feel like um, it doesn't add, oops, doesn't add that much to have a bottom. The light still comes through. And let's see, what other color should I put in there? Maybe another red. Okay, put those leaves over the side. Now I'm gonna take my tear and tape and I'm gonna put it on this side of the flap. Burnish it a little bit, either with your bone folder or if you have nails, your nail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this this way and then I'm just going to bring this in a half fold to make sure it gets up with the edge. And then I'm going to press it down. And there you are. There's your tea light. Let me run. It's going to take five seconds. I'm going to run out to my uh, Halloween decorations and just hopefully show you how it lights up. Just a second. Okay. Sorry. I always know where all my extra flickerless lights are because they're inside of my Halloween. These are, I don't know where I got these from. Michael's maybe, but... That's where all my flickerless, uh, flameless flicker lights are. So I don't know if you can really see that too good, but if it was dark in here, you would see how it glows through. And there you are, a quick and easy photo for decorating your Halloween table, your Thanksgiving table, or you can do one like this for like a Christmas table. All right, guys, 
Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. My, I usually upload on the weekends only. Uh, never have time after work to do it during the weekday. But I'm glad you stopped by. Thanks a lot for taking a second out of your day to look and have a great Sunday.